In this video, I'd like to control some dimensions and put them in a variable table and use that information on an assembly drawing with a parts list. Let's get started. Because I have the yellow part open in its own window, I can access that window by just double clicking on the part. Notice that this is a synchronous part. I can turn off or on all of the dimensions using the PMI collector in the Pathfinder. Or I can control them one by one, just turning on the dimensions that I need. Because I want to control individual dimensions, I may want to have special names for each dimension. There are several ways to change the names of dimensions. One way would be to select a dimension from the PMI list in the Pathfinder and press F2. This allows you to key in a name. You can also access the rename function through the right mouse button menu and select rename. While we're here in the right mouse button menu, let's take a look at some more functions. You can show the values for dimensions, show the names for the dimensions, or show formulas, which will give you both the name and the value. To control these dimensions in the variable table, let's go to the Tools tab and Variables. The Variables table is a very powerful tool. It allows you to control dimensions and other parametric variables associated with your parts. You can also lock or unlock dimensions right from the table. Also, control values of dimensions and variables units. Write formulas, establish a range for variables, and write comments to explain how the variables or formulas are being used. The Expose column allows a variable from a part to be accessed externally from a different document. For example, from a parts list, which is what we're going to do. So in this case, we want the length dimension to show up in our parts list. We'll flip back to the assembly with Control Tab, and here we can make a change to the part by activating this part in place with a double click. The gray part is not open in a separate window, so when I double click it, I'm activating the part in the assembly, and I can make changes here. Notice that this is an ordered part, and I can get to its dimensions by double clicking on a feature. To change a dimension, I'll just single click on the dimension and change it to, say, 5. To exit the part and get back to the assembly, I'll click the red X. Now let's create an assembly drawing. From the New menu, create a drawing of the active model. Select your template. Place the drawing view. And place a parts list. You notice that the parts list shows up, but it doesn't have a length column. So I select inside the parts list and go to Properties. In the Properties dialog, I go to the Columns tab and then find the property I want to put on the parts list. This is length as an exposed variable. Next, add a column for that value and say OK. This adds a length for both of the parts in the assembly. Just to make sure this is working properly, let's go back to the assembly and make some changes. So, Control Tab to get back to the assembly. Double click to activate this part. Single click to change the dimension. X to switch back to the assembly. Double click to open the yellow part in its own window. And single click to edit the dimension. Control Tab to flip to the assembly. Go to the Tools tab and then Update Active Level or Update All Open Documents with Alt-U. The assembly updates to reflect the new size of the part. Now we'll flip back to the drawing. Click on the Update Views button and Solid Edge gives us a list of the changes that were made since the last time we had the drawing open. So we'll just say Close and read the new values in the parts list. They have indeed updated. So we've seen a lot in this brief demonstration. Changing parts in their own window, changing parts in the assembly window, updating the assembly, creating a drawing, creating a parts list, adding a column with a variable to the parts list, and making changes to synchronous and ordered parts in the same assembly. Thanks for watching.